Hello, welcome and thanks for joining me again for another watercolour demonstration. Now this one I thought I'd do like a simple little river scene. So I'm going to start off with a 15 by 11 feet of Fabriano watercolour paint. It weighs 130 pounds. Um, you'll see all the materials in the, in the description below. So I'm using a big height brush and I'm starting off with a bit of a raw sienna, pop that down to the bottom, just add a bit of background colour, then let's go with a little bit of ultramarine, add a touch of Payne's grey to that, and I'm just going to brush that in, something like so, bring that down, Create like a reflection in the water below, right down the bottom. Now I've done that a little bit too dark, <coughs> so I'm going to do. I'm just try and lighten it a little bit. Using just a clean, I was going to say damp brush, but there is a little bit more water on there than I meant to have on. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just seeing how it, how it works actually. Right, let's, let's, let's just go with that for a sec. Now I want a sort of very blurry sort of background trees you can just about see. So I'm just, the horizon line's quite high on this one. It's going to be about there, about two thirds of the way on. And I'm just using, that's a bit too strong. I want it a bit lighter than that. I'm just dipping the just the tips of the water in, just, just to lighten it slightly. See how that's lightened it now. Pop down some reflections. And that's all the way up there. And then I've got reflections down below. Soaking up that water that gathers at the bottom of the page. I'm going to introduce a little bit of cad yellow. Before I do that, I just want to do Do a few trees right in the background. So let's just pop these in these trunks there, all down these reflections as well while I'm doing it. A few more on this side. And down again. Remember the, the horizon line's there, so that's where I'm starting the reflections from. Pop a few more in there. Normally I'd have to keep reloading the brush, but what it's doing is just catching a lot of the paint that's already on the paper. There's some more reflection down there. You won't see a lot of these when, when, they're, when they're done. Right. The paper has stretched a little bit, so I'm just going to pull it flat against this board. Just a 9mm piece of plywood I use that leans against my easel. I have it upright, it's almost 90 degrees for no other reason and it's just easier to film. You can have yours a lot flatter if you like, just a slight angle, just enough for gravity to pull the water down the paper. Now I'm just giving a bit of ultramarine, a bit of, bit of uh, cadmium yellow. And then just pop in a few little bits of Green, I'm just pulling down the reflections as I'm as I'm sort of going along, something like that. A bit more yellow. Pull down those reflections. Let's go a bit of ultramarine there. Pull that down as well. A bit of Payne's grey. Cad yellow, we we'll sort of darken it up there, this sort of area, pull down the reflections again. We we'll go back to that cad yellow. But I'm sort of twisting the brush around like this, watching where that horizon line is. Once I come down to that, pull the reflection down. Just fill in that corner. And 
to pretty quickly you build a nice little river bank you can always imagine the reflections there and it's gonna be just a slight little few little little rocks and things now what I want to do I just want to do some more now the paper's dried slightly just do a few more trees and these are going up there like that there's one up there and again I'd say these are sort of the middle the middle oh hang on don't forget the reflections the middle lot of trees that I'll be doing I'll do some stronger ones in the foreground or at least a little bit closer maybe not right in the foreground but again so that's just a little bit on that maybe do something over these trees as well a bit of brown a bit of blue Things going on in here. Don't fit your reflections. Oh, let's get a bit more. I'm working out. Come a little bit closer, I think, with this. With this one. So I'll just. Okay, a sort of little bend in the river there. Okay, just pull that down there like that. Now I've worked out where the actual lie of the land is. Let's go slightly up and introduce a bit of ultramarine into it. Okay, just pull down the reflections as you go along. A bit more cad yellow, a bit more ultramarine. Boom, right up there. Down the effect as we go along. A bit of Payne's grey when you get to the dark greens. Just a slight little bit of finger work there. And if it's just slightly coming away, I'm just going to refix that. Just make sure it's flat against the uh, board and then I can carry on let's get another layer in there so if you imagine that was the most distant one well that was the distant one and you can see now when you're looking at this so far away these ones I've done the same colour as the sky looks sort of this really misty in the distance then you got this sort of this one there then you got this one right there we've got ultramarine Really sort of pop something in here, see that's how we're catching down at the same time. You know, you've got another layer. I was going to scrape in some rocks in. In fact, let's just scrape in the odd little, little one there. Just reflection down there. I don't want to get too much because I've done some scraping there. What I could do is. A little, little reed here in there. Let's try and get it a little bit darker so it stands out. Little reflections down there. And just a little bit of a little bit of red there, just to add a something different. And, uh, another layer on this side, I think. So I'm back into that cad yellow. Ultramarine, Payne's grey. I'm just going to bash that in like that. Hold down the reflections. Okay, just the Just 
So I'm just sort of flicking up the uh, this rigger brush. And it just it just sort of just leaves sort of dots at the top of the stroke. Just makes it look like reeds. I don't know if I'll get away with it. Doesn't that? Yeah, a little bit darker down there, where it meets the water. I think what I'm going to do now is just to go up a, just a, 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 a big foreground tree, just about there. Not too uh, imposing, but I'm just going to give it a quick dry. Switch to the back to the big eight brush, just dip the tips into the water, bring all the air back together, and then I want burnt umber, ultramarine. So there's just enough water to hold all the airs together. I've got water swishing all around the palette. Now, um, I want a big one, sort of, sort of like that, put it up there, like that. I fit the reflection down there. Another one up there. Um, it needs something over there, doesn't it? Just loosen that paint a little bit. Um, The other one down there. Um, just a few little limbs on them. Uh, it's just pop something there, down there, like that. Something going down. Just using the number number three rigger. Bit of brown, bit of blue. Something coming off the top of the screen. Drag down there like that. It's just darken that a little bit. What I'm going to do now, just put, a, just put a few leaves on these foreground ones. So I'm just going to clean the brush, squeeze, squeeze the water out into the jar. Just dry, dry the hairs, and then I'm going to go into that red cad yellow, raw sienna, cadmium yellow. I'm just pop a few little leaves on these. Down there as well. Just a break up there. Dark. And I think. with like a little little focal point just like a little fisherman or something on that on that corner I think I just want to try and keep it fairly light
a little reflection below. I think I'm going to call that one done. So all that's left to do now is a bit of brown, a bit of blue, nice dark mix. I'm just going to stick my name down here, out of the way. And now I'm going to just put a mount on it and see what it looks like. So there's our mounted watercolour painting, a simple little river scene with our fisherman. So let's go and have a closer look at it. So I started off with this bit of raw sienna and blue background. You can see at the time I, I, I was trying to keep it nice and light and you can see the advantage of that is as you put the sort of darker colours and come forward and the brighter colours it pushes it really far back. Especially you see this like this distant tree right in the corner in the blue. Look how far that looks now compared to the rest of the land as it's coming forward. See this sort of lighter area in the sky I've reflected down in the water below as well as all the other reflections. Remember to not, not don't just reflect your trees but reflect the uh, the sky as well into the water. Quite a high water line in this one almost two-thirds of the way up so it gives lots of scope here for reflections. With the background in then it was adding a, adding a bit of greens then, a bit of cadmium yellow to the ultramarine, a bit of Payne's grey when I wanted to really sort of darken it and then as I went along pull the reflections down, a lot easier to do at the same time because you've got the colour on the brush I'm going to try and remix the colours again I'm trying to vary the colours as much as possible to keep it interesting you don't just want sort of one uniform colour, it'll just look boring and then just just to break up where the land meets the water, just put the odd rock in. I've tried to keep it subtle, I didn't want to overdo it with the scraping. Then the foreground, see I've sort of really darkened it, tried to create some sort of shadows, sort of silhouetted slightly against the light coming through the centre of the scene. See all these distant trees and things just flicked up using the, hay, the, the rigger brush and then use the flat edge of the hake brush to produce these sort of really dark toned foreground trees saving the strongest tones for the foreground then we got a little fisherman there just a slight reflection below just to give a focal point for the for the scene well that's it for this one thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed that um, if, if you want more videos that are available on my patreon page if you want to go and have a look at that but uh, keep practicing. Any questions, please ask. And I'll see you again soon.